Hey everyone, it's Jeremy with Teletone. Uh, coming to you from my final day in my home studio. Uh, we've shot a bunch of videos here and uh, my family is moving uh, to be closer to both of our parents. Uh, my wife and I both have uh, family that live in the same city. Um, the moving truck is already packed up. As you can see, normally I have a desk with a bunch of gear and everything, um, giving you fun stuff to look at. Today it's just me, you, and the keyboard basically. Um, because right after I shoot this video, uh, we are headed out. But the reason for this video is because we have another new instrument uh, coming out very shortly. Uh, this is the official walkthrough for retrograde bass. So there are a lot of virtual basses on the market, uh, some really great ones, but the one that I wanted uh, I could not find anywhere, and so we decided to make that instrument instead. And the bass that I always wanted was something that legitimately sounded like it was pulled from a session from the late 60s. Now, I bought basses before, and, and I've fallen for this a bunch of times where something is marketed you know, as vintage or it captures the sound of an era. I've seen this with other drums and basses, and it's like, okay, they, they use vintage mics, vintage preamps, but then they made it sound you know, completely modern right out of the box. We wanted something that where we started, where the, the core of the sound really does sound like uh, the session itself, uh, where this bass would have been played, you know, something 1967, 68. Um, we wanted to really nail that. And then from there, we decided to give you tools to make it sound more modern if you want that. And if you're a fan of music from the 60s, you know, if you've listened to, uh, you know, David Axelrod, Pet Sounds from Beach Boys, you will be familiar with someone named Carol Kay. Uh, she was a guitar player first and then a bass player. And she has that really, really iconic bass sound uh, of, you know, kind of playing up towards the 12th fret, usually palm muted and picking. We're very, very fortunate that she's been very vocal and clear about how she got her sound. And so it lets people like us, you know, try to gather up the, the gear that she used and use that for our instrument. She's been very generous with that information, very public about it. So we were able to track down, you know, a lot of the stuff that she actually used, you know, vintage P bass, but also um, a 1968 Super Reverb amp. Uh, hers was actually a 67. But uh, any of the, the ones from that year that we found had been altered too much over time. So we went ahead and purchased the, the 68 because it had like all the original tubes, speakers, everything, um, which, which was really fun and just sounded really nice uh, the first time we plugged it in. You know, uh, it's old and noisy, but we think that that all just really, you know, adds to the character of the instrument. So we recorded the signal direct, of course, but then we also put a variety of different types of mics on the on the amp, uh, tube mic, dynamic mic, ribbon mic. Um, we'll, we'll go into a little more detail, you know, once we look at the interface, but you're probably just wanting to hear it first of all. So uh, before we go any further, let's just hear how retrograde bass loads up. One of the first things you're going to notice with this interface is uh, that First of all, there are more mics than you would necessarily normally need like for a bass instrument. Um, and you will also notice that whenever you move one of these, the background changes. Um, and that is because, you know, we, we're really just trying to give you colors to, to play with for this instrument and give you something, you know, nice to look at in the background too, to where it feels like you're kind of making two uh, pieces of art at once, the background as well as the whatever song you're working on. Um, so those will respond to those faders. Okay, so when you uh, look into the instruments folder, you're going to see a few options. There is a palm muted option and sustains. Uh, let's just start with the palm muted for now. And I'm going to go ahead and play this with a beat just so it's a little more interesting. So that's kind of how it sounds right off the bat. Uh, that is just loading with the 
uh, direct signal, and then a little bit of the synth uh, mixed in, which we'll, we'll talk about in just a minute. But that's kind of how it sounds uh, the first time you load it up. So let's take a, just a quick look at these other mics. Uh, let's turn the synth off. And this is the direct signal you were hearing. Here is that uh, old RCA ribbon mic. Uh, here's a dynamic mic on the amp. A tube mic. Next you'll see this warped signal, and that is uh, one where we pitch shifted and time stretched it. Um, actually, we, we sped it up. I guess I shouldn't say stretch. We time compressed it, condensed it, and it, it sounds a little bit different uh, for the palm muted versus the sustains. Uh, for the palm muted ones, it almost sounds kind of like an upright. And, and um, it sounds really cool when you start to dig into some of the effects, but we'll come back to that. Uh, the synth layer is kind of what I was talking about where I said we wanted to give you some tools to really make sure that you could kind of make any bass sound you wanted with this. Uh, it loads with a sine wave uh, selected, but there's also Sawtooth and Square. Uh, we'll get into the, this other stuff a little bit later. But this allows you to kind of just give a little bit of uh, foundation for the other sounds because, you know, in a lot of instances, like especially, you know, referencing uh, Carol Kay, Wrecking Crew, that type of sound, um, a lot of times they were playing with a pick, you know, up near the 12th fret. And so we wanted to be able to uh, give it a little bit of help from the bottom end. So this kind of just loads sounding a little bit like a sub. And when you mix it in with the direct signal, which is kind of how it loads, so you can see how that really helps the bottom end just stay completely solid. Now, another thing that you can't actually see on the interface, but this and this applies only to the palm muted samples, is that we actually sampled the entire P bass twice uh, for the palm mutes. And uh, that is to record um, the very palm muted sound. But we also recorded a different layer where I kind of let up on my palm a little bit to open it up just a little bit, so. So you can kind of hear as you move the mod wheel, it's going to flip over to those uh, other samples um, in case you want to let up on that palm muted sound just a little bit. All right, um, I guess good as time as any to mention that also there's a few other articulations uh, that we threw in there that you can play manually. So there's kind of a, um, I don't know what you'd call this, like a hand mute? I guess I didn't think to, to look up what it's actually called, but you know, uh, a lot of times if you're playing palm muted, you kind of have um, sometimes where you also maybe kind of mute the strings on the offbeat. And uh, that's just triggered down here. If you look at your uh, digital keyboard in contact, you'll see that is lit up pink. There's also some other slide sounds of like your fingers on the strings that you can use. I don't want to spend too much time on that because uh, in my mind, that's something that, at least the squeaks, something that you may just want to draw in yourself. Um, I may not be coordinated enough to really like pull it off live in front of camera. This tone knob acts basically exactly like the tone knob on the bass. Um, we, we spent some time really just kind of identifying exactly what was going on with the tone knob on the P bass. And um, I think we got something really close to it. <laughs> Uh, there's drive over here, which kind of um, almost represents, you know, like overdriving the amp. But you can you can really push it and get, you know, a super fuzzy type sound. Just kind of taking a quick lap around the rest of the instrument. There's an EQ here, uh, which will come in handy. Uh, output compensation in case you decide to start doing a bunch of cutting and you need to compensate or turn it up or down. Uh, sensitivity. This is going to favor either louder or softer samples if you turn this, 
then uh, you'll be able to hear, like if you turn it this way, then you'll be able to hear the quieter samples. Then you turn it up the other way, it's gonna give you more of like the, the really loud, more like aggressive velocity layers. And I went ahead, when I recorded these, I just let it like do what it was gonna do on that loudest velocity layer. Like sometimes it sounds like it, it's, there's some fret buzz and other stuff as if you were really laying into it. And we wanted to leave that in there, but we put it at the very, very top of the range. So um, in case you don't want that, then, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to get to it. You have to, really, you have to really lay into it when the sensitivity is set to 12 o'clock. So, um, but I, I think it really adds to the instrument, not, let it, not trying to make it so perfect to edit all that stuff out. We, we really wanted to leave um, some of those uh, flaws from the loudest velocity layer in. When, so when you really lay into it, you'll hear it. All right, then you see we have amp noise here. Uh, this will only play when the playhead is moving. And that's literally just the sound of the, uh, the amp that we recorded. We recorded hammer-ons for retrograde bass, and we kind of stopped at the hammer-ons. And I want I to take a second to explain why. So I have bought, like I said, I, I own other virtual basses, and there are some of them that are so cool, like right out the box, where they'll do hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides, and all this stuff. And that's great in isolation, but after using them for a while and trying to actually use them in a track, I've found that it's so hard to control. It's like you don't always want it to do the hammer on or the pull off or the other thing, uh, especially because a lot of times you, you just lose a little bit of power. And I wanted the, the low end to just be a constant and I didn't want you know, the, the performance to kind of dip in volume constantly when you play legato. Um, so we made the decision that we wanted to do hammer-ons, but we wanted also for you to be able to turn them off because with the other ones that I've owned, most of the time when I'm using it in a track, I end up wanting to turn off at least some of those. Uh, but we, we were very careful with the hammer-ons to try to make sure that you don't lose much power you're going to lose a little bit because that's the nature of like playing the bass is that when you, you know, perform a hammer on, it's not going to be matched at the exact same volume. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a reason behind why we picked just that one. One other thing I wanted to explain about something we didn't record and why. Some of the other basses that I have uh, key switch to decide, you know, which notes you're playing from which string. But we decided just to... Uh, save you some trouble, at least trouble that I've run into. Uh, again, with things losing power, losing bottom end, switching strings, or trying to play a bass line while imagining what string you're supposed to be on. So we sampled the entire bass where each note had the most power. Um, so we don't have you know a bunch of different octaves from different strings or key switches. We just want you to load up and for it to sound strong right from the beginning, all the way through, up and down the fret. Uh, so I wanted to mention that as well. Okay, mono mode. This is something that uh, really comes in handy, maybe a little bit more for sustains. Uh, if you hold down the sustain, uh, those notes will cut each other off and you can't play, you can't play like a chord with it or anything, but um, depending on the type of music you do, uh, this, this could really come in handy. as opposed to like holding down the pedal and, and and all the notes kind of sustaining on top of each other. This will make sure that they don't do that and that you can just play as if it were a bass. Uh, we'll come back to that when we get to the sustains. Then there's a bunch of effects over here. There's some tape saturation, slapback. Their room, flanger, compressor, chorus, and then warble. 
This is going to make it sound kind of more lo-fi. And if you want to bypass any of these, you could double click it and it'll kind of keep its place, uh, but turn it off in case you want to audition things. Um, if you want to reset all of your effects, just hit this button and everything goes back to zero. Now would also be a great time to mention that uh, this is where it starts to get really fun that you can, you know, turn on different mics and you can decide which one you want to go to the effects. So um, let's say I'll give you kind of a, a scenario that, that, that I use quite a bit. Uh, you, you don't want the synth to go through the effects because you want that sine wave or sawtooth, whatever you're using, uh, to just stay as like just a sub. And then maybe you want to, you know, send some of these mics, maybe pan a couple of them left and right, whatever. And so then this, uh, this sine wave is not going to the effects, and then these are. You also might have noticed that on uh, when you flip this over, there is a high pass and low pass filter. Uh, so this brings us to another uh, point that I wanted to talk about. And maybe it was the elephant in the room for you. It's like, why do you need a bass instrument with all these mics on it? Like, is, is anyone really using, you know, four mics and a synth to make a bass sound? Um, maybe I, I, I personally tend to just use like one or two and then usually the synth. But, but I think that, so I have to take these off. It throw, it, it, for some reason, it throws me off whenever I'm talking with the headphones on. <laughs> uh, but I typically use, you know, one or two of the mics and then the synth. And then I use high pass, low pass filters to kind of decide which part of those mics that I want to use. Now, you can use all of them and don't, don't work like, don't Google, you know, if it's okay to do that, if you like the sound of it, just do what you love and don't worry about it. Um, but I personally am not typically turning all these on and then trying to mix all the faders to create a bass sound. But what I do is a lot of times, like say, because right now I have the direct ribbon and synth pulled up. So uh, a, a scenario that, that I've done lots of times is basically like, okay, let's take this sine wave and let's make sure that it is just a sub. So let's filter out everything above, let's say 80 Hertz. And so we'll leave that. And then for the ribbon mic, I'm gonna turn the direct off for a second. I'll turn the synth off too. And pan it back to center, reset the effects. This has a really cool uh, mid-range to it. And so like a really great low mid sound. So maybe we take, you know, we filter out everything below 80 uh, if, since the synth is gonna hold that down. And then we filter out, uh, let's say everything down to like uh, 2K and then use the direct to hear kind of the attack. And I'll also filter out the low end. Uh, you can, again, I don't want to tell you what to do. You can get into a little bit of trouble mixing sometimes if you have too many different signals on the low end, like it doesn't actually make it more powerful, it can make it weaker. So it's not a bad idea to at least try, uh, you know, taking some of the signals and, and uh, bypassing the sub -E frequencies and just letting the sub do that. but Again, totally your call. So now we get that nice palm mute sound from the direct. We get a really nice low mid sound from the ribbons. And then we have the synth for the sub. So that's kind of how that section works when you flip these over. Uh, again, you can bypass the effects, high pass, low pass, filter, panning. You know what to do. 
Okay, maybe we should listen to some of these design patches. Let's, there are two sections for them, the palm muted and the sustains. Um, let's load up a nice place to start because it, it is a nice place to start. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, and I pulled up a different beat from what I played earlier. I wanna try to, you know, keep things interesting. So I'll switch up the beat sometimes of what I'm playing. The beat is 78, bring the noise in case you were curious. That's a good place to start. Let's hear another one. All right, this one's called Moxie and it's with the, the beat uh, 79 Heavy Flange. Let's hear this one, not very bright. I'm gonna keep it on the same beat for now just to keep things moving. So that's like a, a super, like a more mellow, dark one. Um, I really like that one. All right, let's do this uh, preset Jackson 5. Let's switch up the beat too. Let's do, we're gonna, I'm gonna use the one uh, 97 Braggage from Tempo. So that's kind of a mellow one. You can see it uses the direct and the dynamic mics, uh, no synth on that one. But again, if you ever want to add more bottom end, it's always right there. Make it as subby as you want to. All right, let's get something that uh, I feel like captures the sound of the 60s like even a little bit more. Um, I'm going to do bass cassette with the, the Nixon beat uh, from Tempo. So that is bass cassette. All right, we'll just hear one or two more before we move over to the sustains. Uh, let's hear this one, basics. Um, don't be fooled by the name. This is a really great preset. All right, let's hear this one, Stereo Room, uh, and then we'll go over to the sustains. Uh, this one, by the way, I think I did, yeah, it looks like I filtered out some of the low end and then panned uh, the ribbon and dynamic mics hard left and right. They go to the effects, and I think there's some, yeah, room on there. So that's stereo room. Okay, well, maybe just without um, playing any beats or anything, let's just hear a few more just kind of random. There's one in here that's just a sawtooth with some of the effects happening. Uh, here's one that is a direct reference to Beach Boy song, uh, Good Vibrations. This one's called Good Vibes. This one's called Fuzzy Square for obvious reasons. All right, last one for real. Uh, this one's called Brash Smash and it's super dirty, gritty. Okay, let's move over to the sustains. 
All right, the sustains are going to load up uh, similar to the, the palm muted ones with the direct signal and the synth. So you can hear that this is a totally different tone. That's the direct. Actually, turn the synth off for this. So you can hear that the, the warped signal on this one sounds a little bit different. And then the synth is the same, but the, the uh, decay of the synth is gonna match uh, the rest of the sustains and the palm mute, uh, the synth matches those. So you don't have uh, a sine wave sticking out underneath the, the whole time. So they should be pretty locked in together. Okay, so everything else is gonna be the same. Um, tone is gonna do the same thing. Um, I probably, I think I forgot to mention this earlier, but the way you actually play hammer-ons is to play legato. You probably already knew that, but... And it's going to do it for a half step or a whole step. It's not going to do it for, you know, minor thirds, major thirds, uh, anything that would be pretty tricky to do on the bass. So that'll be uh, primarily just for, um, or for whole steps and half steps. Here's how it sounds with some drive. Uh, but let's go ahead, uh, you'll hear more of the effects when we go over the presets, so let's go ahead and do that. And so yeah, again, everything is in the design patches folder, and then you'll see that there's two different folders for palm muted and sustains. So let's open up that sustains folder. Let's hear this one called break a string. This is going to favor the, the super aggressive, harder velocities at the top. You'll kind of hear what I was talking about earlier when I said that we left all the grit and uh, little flaws in there. We did not edit those out. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that one's called break a string. Okay, let me go ahead and show you something I was talking about earlier with the mono mode. This one generator uh, named after a bad religion song. Um, again, showing my, my high school roots. This isn't necessarily the sound of the bass from generator, but I just like the name and I love that song. But let me show you kind of what I was talking about where you can hold the pedal down using mono mode to play something a little bit more punk-like. <laughs> Not the greatest performance ever. I'm just kind of winging it here, but um, that is the sound of mono mode. I'm just using the, the tube mic on that one and then the synth to kind of hold up uh, some of the low end. You could, of course, add more if you wanted to. So really fun to play with. Um, it's not just for 60s stuff. If you want to get into some of that 90s punk, uh, that could be a great place to start. Uh, by the way, uh, for all of these design patches, this time around, rather than creating them under the hood, under the wrench, um, I've decided just to do all of them using controls that you can use. Uh, that's for a couple reasons. For one, um, I want to make sure that uh, between the palm muted and sustains, not all of them translate perfectly, but if you wanted to try to replicate one that I did for the, the palm muted into the sustains, you can totally do that. All you have to do is just look at which mics are on and then flip over the settings to, to see if there's any filtering going on or the effects. But every preset that I have made in here, um, you can recreate yourself. There is nothing going on under the hood that you have to worry about. Okay, let's load up this one, Gut Punch. This uses, um, the, the primary signal for this is using the warped signal.
I'm not going to play as many of these with the beats because you've already heard them and I think it would actually just make the, the video a little bit longer and you may prefer to hear more presets than to hear more variety of the beats. So um, I'm going to kind of just freelance here for a minute. Uh, let's do this one, Little Edge. some nice grit to it. Uh, this one, mic bleed, this was uh, really fun to make. And when we flip this over, you can see that I've done uh, some panning um, with these. And also there's quite a bit of room happening. But it, it kind of just sounds like, um, you know, you were using maybe the drum mics from the, the session in the 60s uh, to, to get your sound. the tone all the way down if you wanted to brighten that up. All right, let's listen to mid scoop. Uh, part of the reason I made this one is I think that I tend to um, really, really push the mids as like a big part of the sound, but that's not for everyone. So I want to try to, you know, make something um, that is not just what my first instinct is, you know, with the EQ. So this one is called mid scoop and it's got, as you can see, the high mids and low mids scooped out a bit. All right, this is one that I almost made kind of like a, a lead. It's actually pitch shifted up an octave so you could play this kind of like a guitar. It's in mono mode. You could take that off if you wanted to. Uh, I believe there was also one other one that was basically uh, a lot closer to like a synth than a bass. Let me try to find it. Yeah, this one, synth R. But it does maintain the range of the bass, so just be aware of that. All right, this one, Smoking in the Mall. Uh, this is a, kind of another throwback one. Um, uh, you know, in, in my head, I'm picturing it being used for some kind of more punk song, but, you know, you could do anything with it. Um... Uh, that one's called Smoking in the Mall. Maybe let's hear just a few more. All right, let's go back to this Nixon beat with the, the bass cassette. This is one that had a preset for the palm muted and for the sustains. Let's go ahead and play it with the sustains too because this, this is a pretty great uh, design patch. And I'm sorry, I keep saying design patch, preset. Uh, don't let it confuse you. It's, it's all the same thing. So that is the sustained version of the bass cassette uh, design patch. All right, so that's gonna do it for our walkthrough. I am gonna finish packing up and throw everything in the back of a truck and I will see you after I've moved. But uh, teletoneaudio.com, you can follow us on Instagram, at teletoneaudio. Um, we're very, very excited. This is gonna be coming out very soon. By the time you watch this, maybe it'll already be out. Make sure that you are signed up for our email list because Every time we release a new instrument, uh, if you purchase with us before, we always send out loyalty discounts. And so we get comments on Instagram all the time. Do you guys offer loyalty discounts for past customers? Yes, we do. We always do. Um, but you do need to be signed up for the email address for that discount code to come through to you. So uh, Retrograde Bass. This is an instrument we're very, very happy about. We're very excited about. Um, and I hope you'll check it out. We are very, very excited to hear what you do with it because you guys always take everything, you know, much further than, than I was even imagining. So that's, it's exciting to make the instrument, but it's almost more exciting to see what creative minds will do with it. Uh, thank you so much.